On the morning of February 24th, I had a dream about a pig. And before I share that dream, I want to just make a few points about the pig in general and what it represents, because the world sees the representation of the pig the same way that the Bible sees it. Someone who is gluttonous, lazy, selfish, stubborn. And the Bible says the, the sow that has been washed goes back to wallowing in the mud. And that refers to somebody that Jesus has washed, cleaned, and now saved and goes back to the same old slop, the sin, the laziness, the, the pity party. And so there's a lot of symbolism in the world and in the Bible concerning the pig. So in this dream, and I call this video the wounded pig. In this dream, I'm observing this pig laying down wounded, and this pig is ornery and, and angry and stubborn, and it doesn't want anybody near it. Just, just stay away from me. I don't want your attention. And then eventually, somebody, a believer comes by and gives this pig some attention that it likes. So I guess it's soft, it's beginning to soften its heart and it likes the attention. And the, but the attention is like, uh, it's what I call greasy grace, hyper grace, where it's just coddling the pig and making the pig feel better in its, in its issues, its, its wounding, its problems. It's enabling the pig and the pig likes it. And then this person leaves and then as more people are coming by every time someone is coming by the pig starts wagging its tail real like happy to see the person and for each person it was wagging its tail like it wanted that attention so the pig wanted the attention it's it it went from being on ornery and angry and stubborn and get away from me type pig to enjoying the pity party and the the coddling and oh don't worry it'll be okay and uh and so but the point was is in this stream is that the pig remained wounded all right that's the point the pig remained wounded it never got up healed from its wound and went about life and so this is the problem that i have seen over and over with greasy grace is that People that ministers that teach greasy grace, they they don't bring correction. They don't want to ever bring correction. And anybody that does bring correction, that person is automatically bringing that correction in the wrong way. Like, oh, you brought it in the wrong way. It was like a little harsh or you did it the wrong way. That's automatically their opinion of correction. And they do that to justify themselves so that they can reject all correction. You understand that? It's very, this is the way so many, so many believers that minister in this nation in America are like that. They're, they're spiritual wimps. They don't want to bring correction. And then the people remain wounded. Just take a look at the spiritual condition of this nation. The spiritual condition of people who identify as Christians is deplorable. People are absolute wimps. But let me read some scripture because, and, and people, I understand that, that there are people that think I'm rough around the edges and harsh. I've even admitted to being rough, rough around the edges, but man, it's like correction. No correction is pleasant. The Bible even says that God disciplines everyone. Discipline means correction. He corrects everyone that he loves and accepts his sons. And, and so that's what people do. They say, you're bringing it, you're not bringing it in a godly way in order to justify not receiving any correction at all. And so, and so correction, it, it, I agree, it has to be done in a gentle way, but nevertheless, there has to be some firmness to correction. Otherwise, people just, they don't receive it as correction. You've got, you've got to be somewhat tough. It's called tough love. All right. And it doesn't mean that the person bringing correction is harsh or unloving or uncompassionate. So let me read some scripture. This is 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 4. I solemnly exhort you 
in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge, the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not tolerate sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accommodate, they will accumulate rather, for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and will turn aside to myths. This is what people do all over the place because they're they're just terrified of, of correction. People that are in error don't want to receive correction, and ministers don't want to give it, and greasy grace is a major part of this problem. Believers and they and they 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 want to preach greasy grace because they people like it. Just like the pig was wagging its tail anytime somebody came by, thinking it was going to get that enabling, that that pity party, that coddling. And so ministers who are not mature, they give it out because the person likes them, and then they just, they're more likely to get money from that person. And even. We're even seeing, it's coming to light now, if you're following the issues with the whole nation in America and the political situation and all, that the pastors, because God is judging the church also, that pastors of mega churches are being outed. You're, you're seeing this one fall, that one fall, and they have, these, these pastors, they have, they have a lot of money because they're great orators. They know how to lead. They have great leadership skills and great oratory prowess. And so they know how to win people over and gather money. And so they are being outed left and right. And so that also falls into the category of greasy grace, because these are people that have turned Christianity into a business. And that's why you've got believers sitting in big congregations, mega churches that are immature. They don't know the word. They're, they don't know how to operate in the ministry of the spirit. Many of them are cessationists because the leadership doesn't get results. And so nobody in the congregation gets results with the ministry of the spirit. And so it must not be for today. It must have ended. They're cessationists. They resist the Holy Spirit. And it's just, it's, like I said earlier, it's deplorable, the condition of the church. But God is constantly taking a people out of a people. And so, like, I have a fear of God. I have a very reverent fear of God that even though I keep myself very busy doing the work of the Lord, which is what he wants to see, it's like, like the sin, sin is not an issue as long as you're not practicing it. All right, I've said in the past, sin is the only issue. And when I've said that, what I mean by that is sin is the only issue when you're practicing sin and rejecting the correction of the Holy Spirit. Sin is not an issue when you're stumbling in something because you're still in the process of overcoming and God knows you haven't overcome yet. And so God is very patient and long-suffering with people that he knows have not come to that point where they're convinced about something. And so they're still overcoming and they're still being convinced. And so that sin is being washed constantly by the blood of Jesus Christ because the Lord knows their heart. It's the practicing of sin that's the issue. That is a is a, a sign of hardening the heart of arrogance and don't correct me and, and I don't want to hear it you know so so that's what we got to do we got to we got to stay supple and open to correction from the Lord because otherwise we'll remain immature and so there are people like this everywhere and so these mega church pastors are also greasy grace preachers because they're doing this for the sake of money they want to get wealthy they want to control people you know I'm in charge I'll tell you what's right you just sit there and listen all right, and so it's just really disgraceful. Here's another scripture verse because a lot of people that need w healing from wounds need deliverance. And I've mentioned this scripture verse many, many times. We all know it. James 4 7, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's a simple formula submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's not complicated. When I when I come across people that need deliverance and they're at the point in their minds where they've humbled themselves, they're they're repentant and they're, they're then they're ready to receive. It's easy to get the demons off of them. Get out in Jesus' name. Get out. The demons flee, and it's it's a piece of cake. 
But when somebody is is resisting correction, has a wrong perspective of scripture from wrong teaching, and is not humbling themselves, it's like hitting a wall, and like those demons stay because the person is inviting those demons with but the wrong belief system. And so that's why it says submit to God. So if you're if somebody if demons are not fleeing from somebody as you're casting them out, it's it's one of two things, one of three things. Either they're not fully submitted to God, or they're not resisting the devil the right way, or a combination of the both. All right, and so so people need to humble themselves and and think and meditate. Like the Bible says, on your bed, meditate upon your heart to see you know to make sure check your heart and make sure you know that everything is right, that am I like this? Am I doing this wrong? Is my attitude wrong in this way? So, and you will see, because, and I say everything I teach, it's because of my own experience. Like I've experienced these things. God has been very patient with me, but nevertheless, I've experienced a lot of discipline from the Lord, correction from the Lord. And I guess it's just my personality where like, I'm okay with correction. I was brought up by a dad who was military, and so, like, I guess when you're brought up that way, you get a little bit used to it. And uh, and so you come to respect it after a while. Because even though my dad had his share of issues, I respect a lot about my dad, who's in heaven now. I respect a lot about him because of the, the things that he did right. So you look at you look at the things that somebody has done right from the past, and that way you can you can glean from that and, and learn from it. And so so you've got to like you've just got to have the right attitude. So all of this uh, boils down to what you're willing to believe. And one more scripture verse before I leave: Proverbs twenty-seven six. Oh, and before I read this scripture verse, go into the description box of this video for links to my website because there's new content on my website, CarballBoxChurch.com. New content on the homepage and the blog page. All right. Last scripture verse. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy.